Are we on? I think we're on. So hi, good evening. Welcome to the IBD and Ostomy Support Show. I'm Louise, aka Crohn's Fighting, and tonight I have my little flashy mini mouses. Thought we'd get a little bit festive. You take a look at Rachel. So Rachel, just just make a noise because then it'll go to you. Hi, I've got the Christmas hat on. And if you go to Steve, and I've got the baubles going. Yeah, he's got his little bit of baubles going on there. A little bit of festive jazz. So tonight we are discussing a rather hot topic at the moment: stoma blockages. Hey ho! I think we've all had one of those, uh, or more. Yeah. Uh, so what have I been up to? So yeah, anybody that's seen my social media account this week's probably going, "Oh my god, that woman is pretty much posting the blog post every day." It's Christmas. It's a bit of advice, or my version of advice for Christmas. Not a medical professional. I've just been writing it up. Um, I had hospital today. Uh, went to go and see the new nutritional and diet uh, dietetics team. I've lost 14 kilograms in seven weeks. Still not gained any weight. Uh, weight still dropping. I think me and Rachel worked out before the show. It's like 33 pounds I've dropped in seven weeks. Um, I've got to go back in three months and have muscle mass tests done, fitness test, um, along with something else. And then once that's done, I've got to go in and have a load of food intolerance scans done. Uh, my output's been all over the place. Um, she's written to my GP and asked for me to be put on eight sachets of, of is it OC something? OCRO or something that she was saying to me today. Um, I've got to take eight sachets of that with 500 mils of water and drink that through the day uh, because my electrolytes are all over the place. Uh, she's also put me in for an iron infusion uh, because my levels are through, well, not through the roof, they're through the floor. So, yay. Um, rather annoyed, um, been chasing up my surgery team. Uh, the registrar said on my discharge papers I'd get a follow-up appointment six to eight weeks after my surgery. Guess what? No follow-up appointment, and now my surgeon can't see me until April. So I'll admit I might have been going <coughs> on the fast train back from London Bridge today at the secretary over the phone. So... Apologies to the secretary if I was a little bit curt and a little bit abrupt, but I need that bloody appointment. <laughs> oh. um, so, yeah, that's about it for me, getting ready for Christmas. Uh, be working hard all next week. Uh, for those of you that follow me on Twitter, I'm doing a Twitter chat tomorrow night on tips to get through the festive period with the stoma um, on behalf of Pelican Healthcare, and that will be 8 till 9 o'clock. So for any of you on Twitter, my usual sarcastic wit and... Uh, off the cuff uh, <laughs> talking as, as per usual. Uh, so I will hand you over to Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel, um, walking to, AKA walking to Stomas. I feel like it's been quite a while since I've been on. I think it's been two weeks, isn't it? Three weeks, two weeks. Well, the last, um, last couple of weeks, I got asked to present at the urology um, conference, nurse conference, which I was really excited about. And my little like, project with the US to me the poor relation and it went down really well and it's I think there's uh it was really interesting some of the feedback I got um however on the Sunday night I knew I should probably have gone into hospital because I had quite a few blood clots in my US to me and a fever took my antibiotics felt okay um in the morning I felt better and I thought I'll present because I wanted to present and then going on Tuesday at the end of the conference I just felt I've to really struggled to put one foot in front of the other. I didn't have a fever, fever it was just about going, but I felt didn't feel right. So I thought my function probably got lower. Um, and then I called my stoma nurse, got a bed on at 18, the surgical ward, and my kidney function was really, really lower than, it's low anyway, but norm, lower than normal. And they kind of were a bit worried. So I was in for a couple of days, but it's um it's made me sort of reevaluate and just sort of chill out a little bit. And I've got a lot of work on, a lot of writing, loads of speaking engagements next year i'm getting really full like in march i think i've got three major ones um i've got quite a lot quite a lot happening but i i enjoy it and i'm just trying to like balance a bit better try and get i need to get some of these I, i'm writing some articles for journals and i'm really procrastinating around it because i don't think i'm i don't know i just sort of got a bit of like doubt going on so i just got to get them done and send them across um and and do it but yeah, I've got Christmas. I'm going back to Wales next week. My brother's getting uh, married on New Year's Eve in a Scottish mm -hmm. castle, Dundas Castle. Mm -hmm. So um, I've today I've I've re I I booked the tickets in June, but I ended up um, 
booking the wrong times because it's like a two day wedding. There's like a, a night before. So today I've just booked an extra, a, nearly a flight now to fly from Cardiff because going up to Ca Scotland because otherwise I'm going to miss the two families meeting. So yeah, just sort of getting ready for the wedding and for Christmas and um, try to take it easy and do some work. So that's about me, I think. I'll pass you to Steve. Hi. I'm Steve, a.k.a. The Bag Daddy. Steve, Daddy of the Bag. Hashtag. Uh, what have I been doing? Mm. I'm, I'm still off work, still uh, recovering. My uh, my wound opened up a little bit more, and uh, there's there's two like like balls that have appeared on on the actual in the actual two holes that have opened up. Uh, everyone seems to think they're granulomas or something. My my doctor didn't really know. He's kind of passed it back to the surgeon. So uh, I'll be waiting to see my surgeon soon. Have uh, has, have you? Sorry, Steve. Just to ask, have you seen the wound viability team about it? Have they said anything? No. But you should be send a picture to your. I know your district nurse signed you off yeah, But if you sent them a picture straight away, they'll know what it is over your. I've GP. got no details for them. They took all their, their stuff with them. Well, even your little the book. Yeah, they, they took all really? that came. Yeah. So literally, I'll go back. I'm not not overly worried about it. It's it's healing well. Um, I think, you know, and everything seems to be going okay in in that respect. So you know, we'll just sort of play it by ear. Granny, you look back. Sorry. So I'm, granny, so granny, granny, lomas are when it heals too much. I used to get yeah. it on my super pubic catheter, and it's where it heals too well, and that's where you get the ball of like kind of it over heals. That's it. Well, well it's kind of like hole, a hole. It's gone a bit over it. Yeah, because yeah, they're, they're, like, they're like filling. They're not level. They're coming yeah, up like like little marbles. But um, yeah, no, they go, will. I can't go back on my Humira until until uh, you know I've stopped. Actually, the dressings are still you know collecting fluid. So yeah, but not, typically, sorry, typically with that, the the uh, wound clinic would typically burn that out with nitrate. Okay. Pack it with iodine, and it normally only takes a couple of weeks to heal once it's been burnt out with the nitrate. Because I've, I've had the same issues with regard when I've had abscesses scraped out, and I've had to have it burnt out because of the overgranulation, and then left it to heal that way. Well, the doctors doctors put me on antibiotics. I've probably had them like three days now. Um, so we'll finish off them. See what the uh, my surgeon says, and i will back to the gym, which has been fantastic for my. Uh, I don't know mental state of mind just being off work with all this time on my hands it's been hard it's been hard trying to trying to fill my days with with you know just doing stuff really so that's been really good um still still under the weight that i was before my op like a stone and a quarter which is good because i'm eating well uh my stomach has shrunk so i'm not it doesn't take me as much to fill up anymore and that's kind of me really uh you know i've seen the kids for tea and what have you they're not staying over the weekends just yet because because um, I'm having like a, quite a few moments where I'm really tired and, and falling asleep during the day. So hopefully this will uh, this will iron itself out and we'll get back to normal. And that is me, really. I think. So I'm um, eating clean at the moment. I've gone back to the Itsu cookbooks. Oh, that's about it, really. It's not much else to report. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so the tonight, so, tonight's subject is blockages. We've blockages. all got something to say about this, raise, haven't we? Raise your hand if you've had a blockage. <laughs> raise your hand if you've been hospitalised due to a blockage. <laughs> now raise your hand if you've had a blockage and you still play dangerous and fast with the food. Yeah. <laughs> raise your hand if you had a blockage and you, with not not con, concerning food. Mm. I, uh, does a prolapse count? Yeah, of course it does. Yeah, it's 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 just another it's another blockage. It's another obstruction, isn't it? Mm. They're, they're, they're they're horrible. I mean, oh, somebody's just put on the chat. Um, Jennifer Higgins has just put. I think wasn't sure if it was an orange or a mince pie. Oh, oranges! I say, oh man, I'm good with orange. Absolutely You're not meant fine. to eat them because of the skins. Yeah, but I can. I'm absolutely fine with oranges. It's it's um, it's bean sprouts and nuts. But even then, you know, it's it's, it's quantity, isn't it? Steve, how many times have you sat down and willingly put bean sprouts in your mouth, knowing 
what is going to happen. <laughs> you know what? Recently, I haven't. I've it's, kept, a nut, it's a nuts that, that really you need to... It's a nuts. <laughs> I've stayed clear. I'll tell you what. The other day, I didn't realise. I forgot that I'd had fish until the following day. And it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> Something has crawled into my bag and died. <laughs> it's vile. And I thought, yeah, it's that fish you had yesterday. Uh, I, uh, I've had... I've been... I really count, for me, I count the, the full blockages where I have no output at all. The partials sort of pass themselves, but where I really, when I'm I'm sort of not having any at all and I'm no output and I'm on the phone to Steve, usually going, oh, like I'm giving birth, going, oh, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for an ambulance and the ambulance <laughs> d- doesn't come. Or I've, I've been to hospital. In We were going for the Grand Canary holiday and a week, do you remember, Steve, a week before, yeah. I ate, I ate special K in the morning. I had a blockage. I didn't have any output from nine o'clock, from eight o'clock until no six in the evening. I still didn't have any any, and I was literally it was like I was pregnant. I didn't have any movement till three in the morning. I was I vomited agony, absolutely I had no output at all. And I, luckily it moved in A and E, so I didn't have to. But they were talking about surgery, and luckily I moved because I'm only allowed as like an emergency emergency for surgery. So it moved itself. So special K is out of the question for me. I had mushrooms today. I was living on the on the deer inside, and I'm thinking, please don't have a blockage tonight. Going, oh, I'm not on because I've got blockage because I ate. <laughs> when it, they're like steak mushrooms, you know, the massive mushrooms. They're really? Oh no, I don't like that. <gasps> and I had bre- I treated myself to breakfast this morning. I went out and I had breakfast, and I went, oh, it was amazing. Like it tasted really good, but I'm thinking I really shouldn't be eating this because um, but I haven't had the blockage, so it's okay. <laughs> oh, I've it's, had. It, it... Sorry. Nah, I had a full blockage two days after to come out of hospital last month. <laughs> Just before my surgery, the, you know, with my hernia, the, the amount of blockages was getting ridiculous. And it, was, it wasn't it was even about food anymore. It was kind of like the, the hernia was causing them. And the thing is, it's, it's the time when, when, you know, obviously, you know, as a noob, if you're a newbie and you're having the first blockage, it's quite worrying. You know, it's knowing when you know you've got a blockage and then how long do you leave it before you contact someone. I mean, as a rule, right, the, how, the, how, the how recom- long would you leave it before you actually went to the, hospital? The, the, recommended, the recommended time scale for this, because I did a lot of research in it prior to doing a post about slow blockages. There's a lot of advice. So if you ring your GP, your GP will say 24 hours before you go into hospital. Yeah, if you ring A&E or ring out of hours, the general advice is anything between two to eight hours. If you've not had any output and you are in a great deal of pain, you need to get yourself up to A&E to get it sorted. The reason being for that is with a bowel blockage, you can never guarantee that what you haven't eaten, especially over that period of time, you, you could risk bowel perforation. Bowel perforation leads to sepsis. Um, there's so many other bits and pieces that can go wrong with regards to a stoma blockage. Now, if you've got a partial, I think with partial, nine times out of ten, you get a lot of watery output, but you don't get anything solid, and you get maybe the pain and the nausea that is associated with a full blockage, but that sometimes passes on its own. But a full stoma blockage, man, you know when you've got a full proper the pain's okay. horrific. The pain is literally horrific. Like the pa- taxi driver took me, and he's trying to take me to Paul Hospital, which Paul is the maternity hospital, and he was trying to take me to the maternity hospital because he thought I was pregnant. Because the noise I was making, it was like I was having contractions. It was just like, is your bowels contracting to try and push the bolus out? But um, but I eventually I kept saying, I'm not, pr- I'm not having a baby. <laughs> just take me to yeah. Paul Hospital. <laughs> like, but uh, and y- the. The noises that come out of my mouth when I have a blockage, I can't control. And I think it's, I I can, because, and the thing with me is I've got the added complication with the prolapse. So I've got this eight inch prolapse. Now, when I have a blockage, the prolapse gets sucked in. That's just weird. And twisted that is, around, it? right? So when I know I've got a full blockage, my prolapse disappears. So when I try to say to them, this isn't normal for me, like my stoma isn't like that big, it's like this big. Yeah, that's it super gets, strange, that is, isn't it? It gets sucked in. I think I get added pain because obviously the prolapse is twisted around because it's inside me instead of out. It's really strange. And then when it's I the get output, it's the only time it's in, isn't it? Yes, yeah, the only time. And then when I get output, the prolapse comes out. It's really odd. Like it just gets as soon as I get blockage, it gets sucked sucked in, and it just goes massive. Because you've seen it once, haven't you, Steve? 
I've seen it a couple of times. Mm. Oh, yeah, Purple it's... Wayne's ball. I just yeah, exactly. Of purple yeah. Wayne's ball. I was vomiting, vomiting in the in the toilet, and then then left early. Went with Steve. Steve was a bit drunk next to me. I had a bucket next to the bed, being sick, going, I really don't want to go to A and E yet. And then eventually, I had movement from eight o'clock till five, no, four or five in the morning. I had movement. What was it that caused that? Because I think I remember you saying about it that you thought it was a bag of Harry Bow because Harry, Harry Bow does slow your output down. I think yeah, but I think I didn't chew it properly because I think it was the Harry Bows that caused <coughs> it. Because I had the Harry Bows about six, and I think. Uh, I think that because I was hungry before, I think that's what caused it. But I was trying to put on a space and like talk to everybody, and I was thinking, I'm, I'm making this noise, and I'm thinking I've got a blockage and I don't want to go in. But I always leave it too late, and but it passes, like it has passed. I've never not had to have surgery for it. Okay, what what are your tips and tricks? Now I've got my own. I have to to, to actually pass in um, a blockage yourself. To try and make it move now I'll, I'll let you guys go first and then i'll come afterwards to see if uh, you, uh, you the ones that I've, I the ones that i've had are normally kidney bean induced <laughs> i don't know why i still eat them i do uh, but I how, how would you how would you try and shift it um a hot water bottle around the stoma a massage around the stoma site don't eat anything plenty of fluids and if that doesn't work have a really really hot boiling bath and massage the stoma whilst you're in the bath with the bag off. And you, Rachel? Well, I, a lot of my hit tips I got from Steve. So oh. <laughs> I try not to say them all. So you've got <laughs> something to say. I'll just shut up. <laughs> because you've got something to say. But, um, yeah, I think hot water bottle. I drink some of Fizzy, whether it's a can of Coke, to see if that helps move it. I try to drink lots of fluids. Steve said to suggest to crouch down, do squats, go in the shower, do a squat, put the put the shower head on the stoma, on the kind of area. That has never actually got mine to move, but I know it is worked for you, hasn't it? Yeah, I think it's just like stimulating the stoma itself with the water. That that's worked for me. Like the crouching thing, that's you know, you know, like if you was washing your feet and in the shower and you don't want to go down to wash your feet, so you lift your leg onto your thigh. That's another one. It's kind of like creating a, like a, a forced area with your, with your stomach. It's quite tight. That's made it move before. Hot water bottle. I couldn't do that. I can't put anything really hot on my stomach, especially um, with a blockage. That's baths not for me. I find baths are quite good, but I, because I've got the added thing with the prolapse, when a prolapse gets sucked in, it, it literally I have to wait until I'm getting loads of contractions of the bowel for it to push it through, I think, because then the prolapse pops out. Well, it's a bit weird. I'm sorry. It's a bit gross to put. No, no, it's, it's all. I find it. I find it strange. Maybe that's someday I should write about that. Like a blockage as my prolapse gets sucked in. Yeah, I wonder if other people with prolapses have that issue. Of course. I I tell you what. Once years ago, and I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, advocate for people to do this. Like, but um, I don't know. Probably the start of my. I actually put my finger inside to shift some, and I shifted a kidney beam. And I, I, it made me feel sick. It was horrible. It, it couldn't feel nothing. Couldn't feel nothing. But just the thought of putting your finger in your stomach, it's not It's not the best in the That's world. That's like a regular thing with me, though, isn't it, with the prolapse? I'm constantly yeah. handling it and pushing it in to put a bag on. Yeah, but I'm on about... Yeah, know, and like I, the, do, the, I do that as well. Yeah, because when I've had blockage, I've had to do that as well because it blocks in. I've had yeah. to... And even the even in A&E, the doctors have done it as well because of the, getting the rest of the prolapse out. So, yeah. It's a weird yeah. feeling. It's a horrible feeling, isn't it? Mm. Blockages themselves, they're, they're vile. I mean, um, it's, I, don't know, I think it's all just the pressure. It's the fact that you might be, you might be really hungry, but you can't heat no more because it's feeling sick. You know, how long do you leave it before, before the airport starts forcing its way up? Mm. You know what I mean? Well, you do, you do run that risk. I mean, it's like the symptoms of a, of, of a, of a full blockage, oh, God, there's so many of them. But even when you go in hospital, you know, they don't really know what to do, do they? They kind of no. give you buscapan and, and painkillers, which kind of slow it down. I mean, and really, you're just relying on gravity, aren't you? And Yeah, because I think the, gen the, the general symptoms for a blockage are nausea, vomiting, or both, a swollen stoma. Mm -hmm. tummy and cramps. the pain, and the pain. Yeah, Absolutely. tummy cramps that... To be perfectly honest with you, I think I'd rather go into childbirth labour again. Uh, <laughs> watery output, 
not passing any output. And the other one that you will notice is a very uh, predominant bloating and swelling of your stomach. It blows up like a balloon. Sneezing can help, but can also hinder because it did it, it uh, moved the blockage of mine, my very first blockage. It was a big one through, through nuts, which caused my, um, my hernia. But uh, I sneezed and the, my diaphragm like contracted that, that much that I felt like everything in my stomach went into my bag, you know, and I ran to the toilet to thinking, oh God, what am I going to find? And it was just a bag full of chewed, chewed up nuts. Oh God! But you know, I was kind of pleased. But I felt like a tear while once it happens. I, I knew that something had gone wrong. But you know, things happen for a reason. And well, this num nuts. Do you remember when I decided to eat dissected <laughs> co coconut? Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make myself some overnight overnight oats, and it's grated coconut. Surely that's not going to cause me any issues. Oh, my God, that left my stomach feeling like I'd been cheese grated from the inside out for about a week. I've never passed anything so bloody painful. <laughs> but don't you find, though, right, so I'm a classic of this. When somebody says you can't eat that, I go, yeah, right, I'll show you. And it's like today with a mushroom going, I really shouldn't eat this. I'm going to have a blockage. I don't want to go back in that hospital because it's embarrassing doing all these talk, public speaking stuff, and then going, oh, by the way, I'm back in hospital. Hi. And I, so I was thinking, but and I sat there and I was, I was literally the mushrooms on my plate. I missed off when I ordered the food. And I thought, do I eat it? Do I not? And, I, and then I thought, oh, it's a big mushroom. Oh, I like the big mushrooms. And then I thought, oh, it's like really like steaky. And then I thought, oh yeah, well, I'll just have a little bit. And then a little bit more. And then a little bit more. And then a little bit more. And it's like, oh, sugar. Okay. Did you like, chew them? I chewed it really well, yeah. But I know I shouldn't. Probably shouldn't have eaten it, but I did. And I think. It's if you're over this Christmas, there's so food is so easily available, it's easy to try things. If you are going to be a little bit daring, take them in smaller quantities and like lots of fluids. Try not to like eat a whole packet of nuts, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> just, ju ju just to note to the heat to, to uh, my little buddy that is currently WhatsApping, WhatsApping me, she's just messaged me, said, Talking of blockages, I have just eaten Christmas cake rammed full of raisins. So I'm now going to be getting a message off of her within the next sort of 12. 24 hours going, I don't feel great. This is also the woman that has messaged me and said that she's eaten a full pack of coconut macaroons. Oh, my God. Eh. Comes out with me for the day and goes to me, oh, did you want a bag of salted popcorn? Hello, are you nuts? I'm not touching that. And then she wonders, she wonders why she gets blockages. So this is for you, Fiona. Self-inflicted. Self-inflicted. Yeah. Love you. Hi, Fiona. <laughs> Firstly, wow. how someone can eat coconut is beyond belief. Secondly, mushrooms, yes. Uh, closed cup, button mushrooms, not the big ones. They're, oh, dear, mate. Sorry. Sorry off you. It's Birmingham number. Oh, one, two, one, two, one, three, eight, nine. You're live. I, um, can't, I can't say what I've just said to Fiona via WhatsApp because obviously oh, we're live on air. But it's my, 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 my usual my usual lack of uh, diplomacy sank along along the lines of your bloody mentor, but uh homicide, I think, but <laughs> mm -hmm. But I think we all find out foods that are our triggers and if it's a food that you really love, you know, why should you stop? If if it's a case of you're getting blockages every time then and then you're still chewing it through, uh, you know, obviously you've got to stop it, but I think I think you know certainly drinking in between mouthfuls will help. Chewing it well, you know. I mean, we all. I never ever chew my food properly. I, I kind of like you know. I'm always finding bits of food in my bag that I think, oh, I recognise that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all play with our food. Fiona's just messaged me and said she's listening to the show. So I'll repeat again: you are homicidal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus. I think the thing is, the, the thing is, is, uh, you know, like doing sort of, you know, posts and talking about our personal experiences with stoma, block, stoma blockages and such like, not one ostomate is the same. So there is probably 50% of ostomates that can eat all the food on the don't eat list. 
And then you've got the other 50% that can't eat or do risk eating the food on the do not eat list and suffer, you know, the consequences of eating that food. It is a case of trying things and maybe keeping a food diary and finding out what does and doesn't agree with you and just sort of eliminate that, you know, in your process of going through sort of stoma life. I would say typically within, especially the first six to 12 weeks after having stoma formation, just don't risk it. Just don't risk it. This idiot ate chicken skin. Never had an issue with chicken skin. I've had two blockages with chicken skin in the lot since I've been discharged from hospital. And I know I shouldn't eat it, but I eat it anyway. And then I end up being sick and not having any output and going, oh my God, I think I'm going to die. And then trying to pass the blockage myself. I it's found I found the first year, first year out of hospital. So 2012. And I was super, super like, I stuck to the list. I did not go out of the list. I was literally like, it was the most plainest diet in the world. I didn't go off the list. I was so scared for a year, year and a half. And then I slowly, then I, I think somebody challenged me at the time and said, why, why are you just so strict? And because my eating was a bit off key as well, I get became very strict with it, but I wouldn't go outside because I was worried. And then I slowly reintroduced it in. And over the years now, now I kind of, I know what, to eat and I can eat tom small tomatoes tomato skins not a problem at all touch wood I never I never had a blockage with them and I eat them all the time so I can eat tomato skins not a problem but then I struggle with like special K mine's the high fiber stuff because I think because I'm I'm like a no surgery thing now I really don't want to end up with a blockage and them going mad at me because I've eaten something because then they'd be like Rachel you should have been more like mindful. you should be super vigilant really especially with prolapse yeah. Because it's yeah. like, you know, your food's got to come out further, hasn't it? I think it's, and there's like a, it's sort of like a kink because where it is as well. So it's a, yeah, um, but but then this food, like when I ate the mushroom, I've, I've really missed the taste. And like I love pistachio nuts, but they're softer nuts, so I can justify them. <laughs> but I, I have the cheeky pistachio nut, but I make sure I chew, chew, chew and drink water. There's anybody on the chat, because I can't reply because for some reason it's not working on my end, but anybody got any, um, had any blockages experiences or any foods that they cannot eat at all? They stay away with, or anybody that, that even eats pretty much a lot and, or okay. Graham's put strange trainers, I chew well, but they come out in the bag hole again. How does that work? I'm talking about nuts. You know, they always get, a bit, they're, they're always little hard bits, aren't they? Okay, Graham's just asked, um, he's just obviously, along with sending me his usual funny stuff to make me laugh, he said, okay, serious question, mushrooms are soft, but why do they cause a blockage? Okay, mushrooms actually swell up yeah. with the water in, that's in your body, so as the mushroom hits your stomach, you might have chewed it up really well, but then it reabsorbs the water that is in your insides and swells back up and goes through your digestive tract that way. So do you know what do you know what else swells up? That's a fruit. And I got absolutely killed. Yeah, the mango. I got so my surgeon. So one day on one of my prolapse surgeries, I decided that I would eat sweet corn the night before and mango. So when he went to do my surgery, he came out, Mr. Lawrence, he went, he went mental with me. My parents say he had a massive lecture. You shouldn't even be eating sweet corn, let alone the, the day before surgery. You shouldn't be in mango. He went, I had sweet corn and mango everywhere. Yeah. He's trying to sort you up. <laughs> I'm there in stitches and he went, you shouldn't be eating it anyway and you've gone and eaten it the day before surgery and laughing. But he's retired now, so now I've got I've got a different one. But uh, yeah, I got absolutely bollocked. I got bollocked. So hint, when you got surgery, don't eat sweet corn the night before or mango or mushrooms yeah. because you will get a lecture. <laughs> I mean, Paulette's just said that um, she can't eat nuts, veggies or corn. Graham said to he eats nuts. I know you eat nuts because you keep sending me messages about playing with them in your bag. <laughs> Paulette they also they're said, really hard to squash though, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, Paulette also said mushrooms. Uh, Graham said mango. I eat mango yogurts. Yeah, but that's soft. Know. That's soft, that's isn't it? Soft. It's not. Yeah, but I love mango and I still do eat mango. I just eat a bit smaller. But for me, it seems to be high fiber. So not so much the kind of fruit stuff. Mine is like special K. That caused the, mo the most terrific blockage I've ever had. And so I just stay away. I don't eat cereal anymore because it really affects affects me. So I don't know if that's because it's a high concentration. 
early on whether that's why i don't know i th i think i'll be perfectly honest with you i don't actually eat cereal anymore i've stopped eating it apart from the odd bit of porridge i don't eat it no more because it just has an adverse effect on my stoma and i'm not too sure if it's the sugars in it but it makes me flush and i'm not good with high quantities of dairy anyway so i've just i just avoid cereal now it's like i have scrambled egg but i don't make it with milk i just have just literally i just scramble the eggs so. Jennifer Higgins has said lettuce is a bit questionable for me, but had, but me not had a full blockage, but just take a while to come out and hit. And Graham said I noticed higher output with special K. Jennifer, have you have you had your stoma for about a year now, or a year and a half, or is it? Have I got a different Jennifer in my head? You feel fairly new. I can't oh, reply because yeah. I haven't got. Um, <laughs> I can't reply because I haven't got a. Uh, See, I may it broken. makes makes me wonder whether because graham's had his stoma as long as what he has that might be one of the reasons why he doesn't get any issues his system's just kind of got used to eating anything and everything because this man eats everything i mean he's just put he eats celery uh why Jennifer's why would you want to eat celery that's I my love only celery. question oh, like celery uh liver um Celery, liver, coconuts. These are all foods that just suck the moisture out of your face. You might as well have a, a pint. You might as well have a pint of flour to wash it down. You know what I mean? It's, oh, beggar's belief. Oh my god! Suck the moisture out of your face. Yeah, they really do. I can't, Another I can't. classic. Oh, Brian's put. He loves celery with cream cheese. Okay, whatever floats your boat. Firstly, it'd be with a bit of Tabasco sauce and fog. Brian, you're wrong. Um, Jennifer puts that she hasn't tried nuts and popcorn. She's too scared to, but she's had sweet corn and still loves it. And peas are all right, to be fair. They just come out whole. I love peas. Peas are good fun. See, I refuse to eat peas, but I'll eat sweet corn. Not because I like peas. It's just I worry for blockage, but I'll eat sweet corn. You know what? I will eat peas and I purposely don't chew them. Because <laughs> so I can... can... Play pop. <laughs> You can play yeah. in the pub in your bag. It's a secret little, uh, I, I, it's absolutely, yeah. I can literally eat a Sunday dinner and I'll just shovel the peas down like there's no tomorrow. I'll put extra on my plate and I'll be popping them. Can I just say, we're not actually telling you that you should eat your sweet corn whole, Steve. No, I am. Because, um, because not, not sweet. I would never eat cause, sweet corn anyway. It problem, so I would chew. But I Steve likes to live dangerously. Sweet. Don't see you the see point in sweet corn. <laughs> Um, Elaine's just emailed me. She said she she doesn't have a stoma yet, but foods that her Crohn's doesn't like. And I think some of us can sympathise with that, especially because I know Elaine's got perianal Crohn's, so I know there's narrowing and strictures sort of going through the bowel as well. So you have that to contend with. So you can actually end up with bowel blockages with, with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, dependent on surgery and how damaged your bowels are. So hers are peas, sweet corn, frozen chips. Uh, frozen chips pieces of crisps come out in the toilet so it's that because of the fat content in the chips and crisps mm. uh, okay uh i'll just reiterate i'm not a medical professional <laughs> um but i think dependent on the obviously the stage of the illness and the stage of the disease and how good stuff goes through then there's a possibility that food's just not being digested as it goes through your body's on speed so it doesn't have sit has time to sit bear in the bowel and break down so it is quite literally coming out the way it went in see my, mine is like a three hour i could have a sunday dinner and three hours later i'm feeling the peas and and so that's how long it takes to come through for me so how quick is mine steve it's super quick isn't it it's like literally like quarter of an hour 20 minutes it's through full bag straight away and i think that's because of like the high output problem but i get straight and it all comes out and then it continues. So I wonder how much goodness you're actually taking on board from your I, food, you know. I think this. I've lost a hell of a lot of weight. And, like, I'm now down to, like, 56 kilos, which is, like, uh, and it, it's just fallen off me. And I am eating, and it's just not working. So I don't know if that's a question now, whether it's just too quick, whether I need to look, to look into that. But Jennifer said that she's had a stoma since March, and she's new to stomas. Uh, Derek said that I have a colostomy and I can eat more since it was refashioned five years ago. The original one was 60 years old. Lucky that way. That's good that you can eat more than you did. 
See, Paulette said about sweet potato. Okay, the reason why sweet potato is so easy digestible is because it's classed as a root vegetable. And root vegetables are good in general for stoma life as long as they're cooked properly and within an inch of its life. <laughs> yeah, but you don't really hear people having blockages with chips though, or potato, do you? I don't know. I've had a few people on Twitter since I posted up about the stoma blockages saying about issues caused by eating larger quantities of potato. Like potato. More, about, more about the, uh, the, the skins than anything, isn't it? With potatoes. Yeah, I'm absolutely fine with them. I love mashed potato and gravy. I treated myself to pie and mashed potato and gravy. I can't, I can't eat mash no more. It makes me heave. I only have to put oh. a spoonful in my mouth and I'm, I'm heaving. I can't eat it. Oh, I'm a roaster, I man. I am. I, I like just, roast. I, I, I think like somebody, your roasters are nice, Steve. I think somebody was asking me on Twitter today, and obviously my dietitian was asking me whether or not I eat a lot of white carbs, and I was like, no. I said I hardly touch bread anymore. I don't touch potato because um, I have issues with it coming out. Um, and you guys know that I predominantly try and live a gluten-free lifestyle, or I just eat lots of rice. <laughs> Or glass noodles, but obviously because of obviously the surgery and the swelling and the fact that I've had two blockages since I was discharged as well, it's the way that I've got to go until my insides have completely healed. It's not for everyone. It's not easy to follow, but... What about spice? This is See, I'm fine. I'm fine I with spice. Hot, I love hot food. Now, about two weeks after my, my surgery, my recent surgery... I had a curry at home, and it was just a supermarket curry, but it was like, um, uh, even the title of it was quite deadly. It said something, something like Reaper Curry, <laughs> and uh, and it was too hot, and I, I honestly worried. I worried for my stoma the next day. I thought, I'll eat the chicken and leave the sauce. I just, I thought, if I, if I end up in hospital because of this two-pound curry, I'm, you know, I'm going to be like the laughing stock of the stoma world. So I, I kind of left it, like... And yet, absolutely fine with hot stuff. I mean, I'm talking vindaloo. It's not stupid hot. So, you know, just, just to be brave. You're talking to the girl that has sriracha sauce on her scrambled eggs for breakfast. Or I just do a slice of toast, a little bit of butter, and I just put sriracha sauce on it and spread it over. And that's what I have with a cup of tea for breakfast. I, I know. Last I'm night, disgusting. <laughs> and everyone, you know, all my pals that go out, like, they, they kind of like, uh, it might be hot to eat. But it's not hot on the way out for me, obviously. You know, everyone else has to put a, like a toilet roll in the freezer just in case. I had hot and sour. Does that actually happen? No. <laughs> no, I think it's a joke. It's kind of like spray the toilet no, roll. No, I don't in. mean that. I mean that when it comes out, it's hot. It burns your ass. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Trust me. Yeah, absolutely. I've never, I've never had, because I've always had like, I'm a Korma girl. Used to be. Now I'm a lamb, bold, but Bahali, boo, booly, bahuna. <laughs> It's a bahuna because that's like yeah. the, that's how it should be a bahuna. That's the name. It should Louise, be you're never going to change on this one. It's a lamb bahuna. Rachel has it's, her own language. It, that... In 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 the words of Smithy, it's a lamb bahuna, and I've ordered it. I thought I'm not sharing it. All to your bloody own. <laughs> Oh uh, dear, somebody's just put mincemeat. Now that's an interesting conversation to have with regards to how do you guys fare with red meat? I know I can't eat it. It gives me the symptoms of having a blockage. I just don't have one. It just causes me a lot of ag going through. So what about you two? Rachel. Well, Steve, I was speaking for Steve. It's subject to a little chilly now and again, aren't you? You do. I, I, yeah, I, I totally love mincemeat, I do. And I eat it in bolognese and chilies, whatever. I don't have an issue with it at all. It's kind of like more with the pulses that I add to it that, that I have the issues with. I find I don't usually, like, I might eat the occasionally very rarely at Steve's, or I will eat um, a bolognese, but very rarely. I kind of notice that I've gone, when I li live on my own, I've gone into a really kind of simplistic eating. So I usually don't eat breakfast. I have soup for lunch. And then in the evening, I will have a piece of meat, usually like sweet potato or curly fries or couscous. Couscous has been my best friend recently. 
uh, large couscous, small couscous, and then like um, frozen veg, which I boil for like 20 minutes. So I've got like, um, I, and that's usually what I'll eat. And then I might have a yogurt after, but, but I don't I haven't been doing that recently. And I've kind of kept it really minimal. That's how, what I eat. So I don't really eat mince meat anymore. I used to love, I love bolognese. I just don't really, I think when you cook bolognese, it takes ages. And when it's for just you, it's not really worth it unless you're freezing it. I have no freezer. It's so like a bit of steak though, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but your oh. steaks are your steaks are so good. He's so good at steaks and chips and. It took pudding. me about uh, it took me about two hundred pounds miss. to master it. Lovely. But, uh, I but, um, miss I miss steak. I miss beef. I can't eat it. It just causes me too much ag. I know if I'm going to eat it, it's going to lay me up for a couple of days. Well, I found a fantastic uh, meat shop down by me. Uh, a couple of them were a bit dodgy, and so we don't go there. But um, I'll, I'll go there like once once every six weeks and spend 50, 60 quid, but come away with loads, you know, it will kind of fill the freezer. It's a cheap way of doing it. And I'm, I'm eating more meat that way as well, but healthily. You know, I don't be cooking in fat and stuff like that, but I like red meat, obviously I with find, vegetables. I find I eat, so I'm like a massive fan of fish. I could give up meat tomorrow, really. I really think I could. I do like chicken, but I think I could give up meat. But I, I love my fish. Haddock, haddock and salmon, and I just really do like fish. I think I feel healthier once I eat it, and I've just always – I could never give that up. I could be a pescatarian, but I don't think I could be a full vegetarian. What was that? What was that word? Pescatarian. I've never heard of that word, you know. That's what. That's somebody who eat, who doesn't eat meat but eats fish. Okay. See, I, I, I could give up fish. I like sausages as well, actually. Actually, no, maybe I couldn't be, couldn't give up. Because <laughs> I like sausages too much. Guess what I had today? I um, actually I treated myself, so I didn't have my simple meal I just talked about. Can I guess? Can today I guess? I had, yeah, I had, no, no, I'm going to say, chipolata sausages with ham wrap, uh, bacon Oh, wrap wrap. Oh, And I ate, ate, ate them, and that was my tea for today. Oh, apparently we totally missed something I, on Twitter, I think, because we've not been about as long as everybody else. Apparently, over the last year or so uh, early christmas or two ago there was a massive debacle about pigs and blankets causing stoma blockages for ostomates and i was like what did i miss <laughs> i've never heard of that if you used to eat them whole maybe i don't know yeah, <laughs> well, well, yeah people get them stuck <laughs> in your throat especially if they're chipolatas wrapped in bacon jesus <laughs> these ones are quite big they're like that big <laughs> down in one <laughs> I won't me I won't mention to you two that I've been uh, consuming vast amount vast quantities of alcohol whilst we've been doing this. You're on the Baileys, aren't you? I can see. I clocked it straight away. <laughs> I'm not observing. I clocked it straight away. Because you gave a cheers to Fiona, I think. See, I am observant. Yeah, well, I did. Observant. I sent I sent her a WhatsApp going, guess what I'm doing? <laughs> Oh dear. Um, I think fish. Fish is a good one. Fish is good. Fish doesn't cause a blockage, or, unless of course if you swallow the bones, it just makes the bag stink to absolute <laughs> high oh, heaven. Boil. Uh, and if you have a urostomy, it also makes your pee stink fishy. So it's, like, it's, oh, really it's horrible. Smell. It's the horribly smell in the world. Fish is. It I'm having big problems, right? My urostomy smell is all, it, it is like somebody, something's died up there. It's awful. Hang on. Shall we just read out some of the comments? Hang on. Let's just go up. Uh, somebody's going, uh, Alan, uh, not somebody. It's uh, obviously Winnie, Winnie Fee. She's put Raisin Fee, Raisin Fiend. I said, I know you're a food fiend. Paul, let's put, I eat turkey mince. Now, turkey mince is seriously underrated. It is a very good thing to use in replacement of things like spaghetti bolognese and meatballs and things like that if you can't tolerate high quantities of beef. Uh, I decided to write heat rules. I just, read, put... I just read a red wine helps you with a partial. Yeah, <laughs> I like uh, that. The, the smell is a bomb fest. Uh or is, or is it is strange. I can eat fish now. Didn't like it pre-stoma. I see. I think that's a weird thing as well. I think with the stoma, I think you tend to adapt to what you may not have been able to eat before. Do you do you think that's the case? Yeah. Do you sort of find, especially when when you're post-op, that you sort of go for for the safety options and try things that maybe you wouldn't have tried before? 
you tend to go safe, really, don't you? Because the last thing you want is to be back in hosp. Mm, I'm quite... I've always eaten a lot of fish. I just can't touch red meat anymore. And I'm really bad with pork as well. I don't eat that much pork, to be honest, but I do like it. And it's the same with lamb as well. <gasps> no, I mean, lamb is the, one of the tastiest meats going, but the, the smell of it cooking turns my stomach. I love lamb. I have, to get it, I have to get my lamb flown in, specially cooked. <laughs> What's that tub for the carvery? That. Meat sauce. Oh, I was just going to put, uh, I was going to say, are we on next week? What, what's um, the date next week? I think, I can't even remember what the date is, isn't it, Thursday? It's 14th it today, you. isn't it? Is it the 14th? So 30th, be... 13th today. Okay, so it'll be the 20th, 20th won't it? Yeah. yeah. Winnie so... and me's just put a question mark and she said fishy pee. Like, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. It, um, yes, well, yes, if you have a urostomy, you, it's, it's like so strong. And I don't know if that's, even though like the piece of bowel used for the stoma isn't connected, the smell is terrible. And I could tell, I know it definitely is a urostomy and it smells stronger. Same with like asparagus normally makes your pee smell stronger. But, and then when I have beetroot, I think I'm hemorrhaging from both stomas. So like, then it's like, oh yeah, no, I'm not bleeding. See, there's one, Paul let's just put that she can't really eat beef or pork either. That's not good for her. Isn't that weird? Well, oh, excuse me. Sorry, I'm not sleeping very well at the moment. I've got a bad habit of listening to music till like two in the morning. Headphones. <laughs> Go on, <laughs> <on myself. laughs> uh, Fiona's just put just ha uh, just had Christmas cake rammed with raisins, salt salt and cherries. Oh my bloody good god! Mm. It was lush. Now an excuse to have a large glass of red. Merry Christmas, everyone. Laugh out loud. <laughs> uh, Graham said, what about beetroot? See, now beetroot doesn't cause a blockage, as far as I know. I eat beetroot. I've never had an issue. It just changes the colour of my output. So if you think you're hemorrhaging blood, just go back and check off mentally the food list that you had prior to that. Because Guinness. Have you had Guinness? I can't drink it. But... Now, Guinness is... Uh, it obviously turns your poo black, so... I remember once working at a, a drinks distribution warehouse and uh, basically was told, have a few Guinnesses, have about three, three pints of Guinness and a couple of shots of this gold schlager, which is like a, like a liqueur with gold, fle gold fleck in it. So apparently when, when you poo, uh, your poo comes out black with gold leaf. Now, obviously in a stoma, it would look more, look more like a... Um, like a snow globe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's no, something I do want to try at like, some time. Oh. It's worth a go, I think. Uh, no, Graham, you can give beetroot a go. Um, I would say make sure you get the pickled one and try that first before going for the uh, hardcore stuff that you've actually got to boil up and prep. It just makes your it just you it looks like bright red and the whole output looks red and I think until you suddenly go oh yeah I had beet you you can you know if you forget you're like oh my god what's happening but actually it's then you sort of remember but I, I haven't had any blockages with beet I love the taste of beet I'm not kidding. Are you not? Nah. I love pickled onions though. I miss radishes. Oh, I love pickled onions. I've not had I've not had a radish since I've had my surgeries. Why? Why would you want to eat radishes? I know, I've never <laughs> eaten radish. I've ate radishes almost like uh, like oh, I smoked life. cigars, smoked cigars at Christmas just because it was Christmas and cigars are disgusting. They're but, really you know, nice I'm... and thinly grated and put on a nice oh, no. salad or You might as well eat a fisherman's friend afterwards just to wash it down, you know. Please don't make me spit my drink out. Because this is incredibly <laughs> difficult to clear up to go sticky. Mm. So, I mean, do either of you have issues with bananas? I can't eat them. No, I'm fine with bananas. I, I struggle with bananas. Bananas are, are supposed to be good to get potassium because I, I always am deficient in potassium. But I struggle with, I find that my, it come, the chunks just come out. Um, yeah. 
And that's why I stay away from eating breakfast. I used to eat breakfast all the time, and now I just don't really eat breakfast because I think my, it's slow. It's slug my my they seem to be sluggish in the morning, and sort of things don't not not chew properly because bananas come out like not how I chew. Even when I chew them, they still come out, and it it yeah it makes it a bit difficult. I'm fine with bananas. I think um... I love sprouts. Oh, everyone. I love sprouts. Sprouts are my favourite vegetable. That's all right. Oh, Somebody just put, they can't stop laughing at Steve's baubles. I know. I just, <laughs> want to, I just want to pull them and go bing, bing, bing. There's about, about nine of them, Has but, you know, I thought I'd go sparingly tonight. Just out of curiosity, anybody with a uh, ileostomy that is relatively high up, has anybody ever had issues with pickle lily? I've not had pickle lily for the last couple of years for the fact that it's got cauliflower in it. And I miss pickle lily. Has anybody been able to eat it and not have issues? I used to eat it, but since kind of things and all the prolapse surgeries and all the surgeries I've had for it, I actually don't eat it anymore. But I used to love pickle lily. And my, my, gra my gran used to make it. My Auntie Rose is lovely. And Christmas, we may have it around Christmas and I might try it. Oh, Steve's having a close-up. <laughs> I don't like pickle lily. It's horrible. You don't like oh no. I love Lily, Lily. Mm. a bit of Stilton, a bit of extra mature cheddar cheese on crackers. No, I love yum, cheese. Yum, 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 yum. That's what I had yesterday, right? I had a because I I don't normally have pies. Being Welsh, pies aren't really. I know they're like an English thing, aren't they? I'm like, I know I'm probably like whatever. Not I cut. don't think they're English. But, I think they're Irish. Apologies they? to any Irish people. Oh, sorry, watching, but I think pies <laughs> are Irish. I had a beef. Beef pie with Stilton. Oh, it was so tasty. Like bacon Stilton, <gasps> lovely. But but boy, <laughs> did it smell after it. After I thought, oh, I'm not a Stilton in a while. <laughs> Have any of you read the chat? <laughs> no, I'm not that far forward in technology. Uh, okay, wait, you read it and let's see if you could not laugh. <laughs> Fisherman's friend should be banned. The exact words were Jane sharted last night. Crone's won the bed sheets, Neil. <laughs> Fiona, because you've outed him, right? You know what's going to happen now. Ostrom is going to have an accident tonight, so it'll be 1 1. <laughs> <laughs> that's Carl Karma likes to do that when I say oh I've not had an accident in ages oh, I end up having an accident oh dear oh dear well, I'm not best pleased with the shape of my stoma it's nowhere near as good as my last one it's, it sits about uh, about 6 mil above my skin I'm having to change my bags uh, probably every two days now it's kind of, you know what I mean? I've got rid of my hernia, but my stoma is like pathetic, really. My last stoma was much more, I don't know, like a statement. I I, I, I played let, Let's Play with and Go Dicey with it uh, last week. So I changed my stoma bag Friday afternoon. Stoma nurse told me off I said I shouldn't leave it on any longer than two days. I got it till Tuesday with my stoma. <laughs> And the adhesive ring was still intact. <laughs> I'm having to use oh. an adhesive ring every time now. Oh, it was itchy, man, though. I had to, take, I had to change it Tuesday. I was itchy like anything. You know You know when you're having a proper scratch, it doesn't matter what you do to take your mind off of it. You, you, you can feel the itch, man. Yeah, now I got to Tuesday. I was proper proud of myself. I've got, I'm in a position where, where my, my stoma is kind of like um, about an inch and a half from my wounds. So I'm having, having to be really careful when changing, so no, no cross contamination. And obviously, I put the bag on. Obviously, still concave, still fits lovely. But uh, the the, uh, the the fingers of the bag, because obviously it's shaped like petals, just misses misses the wound by about five mil. So it's kind of it's like a delicate operation when I'm putting that on, because obviously my wound is still is still open. It's still not not. Uh, it's what you're laughing at, girl. <laughs> They're having a domestic on the chat. <laughs> James, James, put, James put pick a lily is wrong, just wrong. Then Fiona put oops. Then James put fuck off for you. Clear the house out. Out of your morning <laughs> empty, more like Chernobyl. <laughs> what, pick a lily's pile. 
I'm agreeing with you there, James. <laughs> I wouldn't. If any of you are on my personal Facebook, because obviously apart from my crow's fighting one, I keep stuff to it. To obviously, just like to sort of like work based stuff on there. But my personal Facebook was literally a riot of IBD toilet humour that you've never been seen. And I did actually have to put apologies for anybody reading this, but this is what happens when you have IBD and stoma besties. <laughs> Because it was it was coming to a case of we was deciding that if we book a hotel room, then obviously the two with stomas are going to have to stay in one room, and the two girls that haven't got a stoma have got to stay in the other one because otherwise they're going to have to evacuate the room if we empty our bag in the morning after the night before. <laughs> oh Jesus! Unless you use Ostomist, Tangy Tangerine, of course. Oh, yeah, but there's only so much you can do, man. It don't matter what you use. Those rooms are so inclined. No, <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear boy. <laughs> I'll leave an empty to the chat. They carry on. I'm going to block them until next week. Um, <laughs> so, oh, so that is it for us for stoma blockages. I think we've pretty much covered... covered <laughs> The ins and outs of things. <laughs> um, I've got to ignore the group chat for the minute. Apologies if anybody is posting. I've got sort of covered it so I can see the names running up the screen as the comments are going on. Uh, <laughs> so, I think gone as our swearing policy. Oh, no, they can't. No, the swearing. Oh, that's not quite swearing. Oh, God. Okay, the others are getting in it now. They're saying about the tsunami smells now. So. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Um, we really lowered the tone this evening. <laughs> we may have to get some guests on next week because, um, yeah, because Christmas is coming up if we're going to be on next week. What shall we cover next week with the thought of it being the festive period and our last one until New Year? Um, mm. What? I don't know. Awkward silences, that's what we should cover Awkward next Awkward silence. Week. Has anybody got any suggestions? Can give a quick... You're not you're waiting for someone to shout out. <laughs> no, on the chat, Steve. <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to have to get the chat, you know. I'm going to have to... No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's put Cards Against Ostromates, new game. Oh, I like Ooh. it. That's dangerous, that is. I don't I would, we, we would have to <laughs> do that really, really late to be able to do that live on air. Um, I played that we, with my uh, my fourteen year old, he, and and it's. So I tell you what, it's a brilliant game, but it's quite close to the knuckle, isn't it? Some other suggestions we've got is Paulette said using public loos. Graham said Christmas is coming, the turkey is getting fat. <laughs> okay, that's not a suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> Well, maybe <laughs> maybe we should cover um, being out and about over Christmas. So, obviously, Rachel, you're going away for you to, uh, to, to Cardiff and then you're going to and your I brother's fly. wedding. I want an aeroplane. Okay. Um, over Christmas, obviously, Christmas Day, I'm not home. Boxing Day, I'm not home. And then I'm in Bath for a couple of days after the, the 20, from the 27th. So maybe we should just maybe cover um, Christmas food as an ostomer. So things that maybe to avoid or put in friend, you know, request to your family with regards to food, so you don't have to feel like you're going hungry. Um, and I think maybe we'll cover like the importance of making sure that you've packed enough stoma kit, you've ordered your stoma supplies because the offices are due to close Christmas Eve, and most of them aren't due back until after the third or fourth of January. And obviously the post goes up the what's it as well with regards to deliveries then as well. So maybe that's what should we perhaps we should cover next week. Mm. Okay. Right. Good night. Have a safe, have a nice sleep, and see so you. So we're going to say good night to everybody. Uh, James, I oh, will meet you Saturday if you're watching. So I'll see you Saturday at some point, and uh, I'll be having words with you about Jimmy Savile. Um, but I'd like to say thank you to everybody for watching. A big thank you to Rachel and Steve for yet again taking the time to come and do the show. And um, sorry that Nat's thank not been with us this evening she's not been well and Steffi bless her she's had her hands full with kiddies and doing the nativity place so she wasn't able to join us either so um if anybody wants a guest spot next week if you could message either myself Rachel or Steve and um yeah we're covering Christmas food packing your stoma supplies and traveling over the festive period and the importance of making sure you get your delivery stoma deliveries uh 
there. You know what I mean? Stable stuff to live on time. So big thank you to everybody for watching. Bye-bye. We say bye. bye.